plant pathogen. Definition of a pathogen is basically what we would call a germ. Wash your hands, you might have germs on them. These include quite a few different uh, kinds of microorganisms like uh, bacteria, fungi, uh, viruses. Examples that uh, we're familiar with of human pathogens, uh, rhinovirus, uh, chickenpox is another kind of virus disease. Uh, colds and the flu are caused by viruses. Uh, streptococcus causes uh, a lot of different infections. That's uh, a bacterium. And uh, athlete's foot is a fungus. Uh, in humans, the fungi are the hardest uh, to fight off because they're much closer to uh, humans than uh, the rest of them, so it's uh, difficult to kill them without killing us. What is a plant disease? Um, similar to humans, it can be called a malfunctioning of a plant caused by a continuous irritation from a pathogen. Uh, disease uh, is looked at as a disease triangle in plants, a combination of the host, uh, which is the plant, the environment and um, the pathogen. And then, of course, over time, these interact. Um, the, inter the amount of disease or the development of disease is, in fact, is um, uh, affected by a variety of things. Uh, the host may be susceptible or resistant, uh, particularly in plants. Uh, we've developed a lot of um, uh, plants that are resistant to um, some of the common disease agents. Um, and then again, the pathogen may be weak or strong. Uh, some of them sometimes um, figure out how to get around a host resistance, or they just may be generally virulent. Maybe they're um, not native, so they don't have anything to keep them in check. Um, and then the environment can come together to favor both. Uh, it may help support the host to fight off the pathogen, or then again, it may uh, harm the host uh, and give the pathogen a, a leg up. So uh, the combination of those three uh, leads to uh, disease and also the degree of disease. Some examples of plant pathogens. Um, biological pathogens, which would be um, microbes as a general rule. Uh, fungi are um, the biggest uh, enemies of plants, which is interesting considering the um, importance of fungi and symbiotic uh, relationship with mycorrhizae. Uh, fungi also um, have co-evolved with plants to um, form uh, all sorts of pathogens that uh, cause disease. Estimated up to 85% of plant diseases are fungal uh, related. Bacteria cause some problems, but uh, just not nearly uh, the level that uh, you see with fungi. There's another type of microbe called a mycoplasma that can cause problems, but um, again, compared to fungi, not much. There are viruses, um, uh, estimated over 1,000 plant uh, pathogens or viruses, uh, and some of those are economically um, uh, very devastating. Nematodes are um, tiny little worms, um, and many of those are plant parasites. Um, they um, are often on roots, uh, but also sometimes um, above ground. There are parasitic plants. That are, um, that are a problem, um, but they are um, fairly rare and fairly novel. And uh, of course, insects uh, may not necessarily cause uh, disease directly, uh, but their chewing and sucking problems can add to plant stress. And then in the process of chewing or sucking, many insects transmit other pathogens. Uh, they will carry um, bacterial spores, uh, viruses. Uh, many are transmitted by leafhoppers and other insects. So um, insects can be what they call a vector. Now, there's some non-biological examples of plant pathogens. Uh, environmental examples are you know, just what you'd expect. It's too hot or it's too cold, it's too wet or too dry, uh, it's too dark or it's too bright. Um, also, in some cases, a lack of oxygen can, uh, can be a problem, and air pollution, um, which can lead to a lack of oxygen and um, a host of other uh, problems, acid rain and uh, smog and uh, partic particulates in the air that uh, limit light. There are uh, chemical things that can cause um, uh, disease, uh, nutrient deficiencies, if there's not enough nitrogen, not enough of some micronutrients. Uh, uh, any of those can lead to a stressed plant that then uh, causes disease. Uh, conversely, you can have too much of some nutrients, or you can have some, nu some minerals that are not nutrients at all that uh, can cause uh, disease. The soil can be too acidic or too, um, too alkaline, too, too n the opposite of acidic. And uh, then uh, much damage to plants agriculturally, uh, horticulturally, is done by improper, improper uh, application of pesticides, um, either the wrong pesticide for the disease at hand or too high of a dose, uh, the wrong day, too hot, too windy, uh, can cause uh, disease. 
And then uh, mechanical issues, just plain breaking the plants uh, from wind or hail or lightning, snow late in the year or early in the year. And uh, lawn mowers, of course, uh, can uh, do a serious amount of damage, as can other uh, things that uh, damage, mechanically damage trees. Disease management is um, a combination of um, uh, approaches. Uh, it's very important to try and balance all the different things you're trying to uh, do as far as management. The most important thing you can do is reduce the amount of disease pathogen uh, units that are there, whether they're spores or viruses or whatever. Um, crop rotation uh, is, is a response to pathogens. Um, by putting a different crop in the ground every year, last year's pathogen doesn't have the right plant uh, to infect, and so uh, it dies out. So um, you uh, make dramatic leaps ahead in um, uh, planting in ground that hasn't had the same species uh, recently. Removing your uh, plant debris, uh, whether it's in a garden or in a, or a large uh, scale um, um, operation, uh, the many pathogens will overwinter, will multiply in the debris or, or in the soil. So um, many different ways to reduce the amount of, um, of inoculum. You need to be careful you don't cr create another problem, though. Some people will think, well, I've got you know, this pathogen in my soil, so I'll just sterilize my soil. Well, then that opens the soil up to all sorts of other things that can move in when there's no competition, and uh, you can very likely cause uh, worse problems than you had to begin with. Um, barriers are important. You can see the bananas there on the lower right. Uh, as soon as they're um, uh, done pollinating, they cover them with a plastic sheath, and that uh, dramatically reduces uh, fungi that get on them and cause different rots. It's important uh, to look into what caused your disease. You don't just look at the plant and think, oh, well, that's probably a fungus, and spray it with a fungicide. Um, you really need to um, try and figure out the disease agent, and then think about what the environment has been recently that might have um, encouraged the development of that disease, and see if it's something you can control. If you've been irrigating routinely, maybe you need to irrigate less. Uh, there's a wide variety of things that uh, sometimes are under mechanical control. Um, rather than just uh, sort of a knee-jerk response. Very important to use varieties that have been shown to be resistant to different diseases. Um, that can just make life a whole lot easier, even if you have the disease agents present. If your plant is resistant, it's like getting a vaccination by humans. Um, you need to optimize your chemical uses. Um, again, you know, make sure you're using the right chemical for the right um, uh, agent, and then uh, that you're using it in the right conditions and the right amounts. Uh, any of those things can uh, make a huge difference in the efficacy of your uh, chemical application. And the bottom line is it's very important to balance all facets of management. Uh, one thing that is important to know, many introduced pathogens um, are some of our worst invasive species um, as an invasive uh, disease species. Um, they often um, are things that plants, uh, local plants have not uh, been exposed to, so they're not uh, resistant to the introduced pathogens, and additionally, pathogens usually have no competition or predators to help keep them under control. Um, it's billions, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars that have been uh, spent in the U.S. from introduced uh, pathogens. Uh, we lost all our chestnuts from an Asian uh, chestnut uh, blight disease. We lost all our Dutch elms, uh, from the, or our elm trees from um, a disease that was brought in from Europe. Uh, white pine blister up rust has wiped out millions of white pines. Um, avocado plantations have uh, been lost to a, a foreign disease. And uh, those are just four examples of dozens of um, you know, truly tragic and expensive uh, situations that have arisen by uh, nonchalant uh, transfer of biological materials from one continent to the next. Some common diseases, blight uh, is called blight because uh, the plants look uh, pretty darn miserable. Uh, it's a bacterial infection, which is um, uh, general, or fire blight is a bacterial infection, causes a lot of agricultural damage to uh, our fruit trees. Um, there are also uh, some fungal blights. Uh, they're generally called blight because uh, they happen quickly. The plant uh, fails very quickly. Um, they are often um, the source of uh, conditions where you need to just put the plant in a different place and plant something different there. Uh, the um, uh, late blight was the cause the Irish potato famine, a uh, ex perfect example of uh, too much of a susceptible species planted in far too wide of, a, um, sit of a, an area and uh, no alternative uh, species, no alternative uh, production going on. Canker is another common plant disease. It's formed by a couple different kinds of fungi. 
um, called canker because they uh, are, look like a large, blistery, um, often weepy kind of area on the plants. Nectary canker is kind of interesting in that it just about always produces uh, orange little um, bodies um, outside of the plant, which are the fungus uh, actually coming out to fruit. Rots, there's a lot of different kinds of uh, plant rots. Um, some on, you can see a soybean uh, uh, root rot uh, on the left and a couple wood rot fungi, uh, shelf fungi on some trees on the right. Um, these often are uh, fatal. They uh, get in and they uh, block up um, uh, translocation of uh, sugars and water and uh, kill the tree they're on. Sometimes they're on dead trees where they're just breaking down dead wood. Uh, rusts are very common, named because they look like rusty uh, uh, areas in the plants. Uh, it's actually um, uh, large patches of spores uh, of the uh, fungus that is, uh, that, uh, is uh, living inside the plant and then um, uh, fruiting on the outside of the plant. Uh, wheat rust is an um, enormous problem. As a cedar apple rust, uh, some of these are sort of interesting in that um, they actually have two hosts. Uh, so one uh, stage of the plant of the fungi, fungi's life cycle will be on uh, one plant and then the alternate um, stage of life cycle will be on another plant. So sometimes in, in that case, um, like for example, you have an apple orchard uh, with uh, cedar apple rust. If you can get rid of the cedars that are nearby, the apple rust will die out because it doesn't have its alternate host. Took a long time to figure that one out for scientists. Uh, wilts are uh, another common disease, um, very often fungal. They are uh, named because the plant actually wilts. It wilts because uh, the disease pathogen has gotten into the um, uh, xylem, the transportation um, uh, pathway of the plants and uh, causes the um, a tissue that is outboard of the blockage to die because it's no longer being supported by the um, root system. Galls are little lumpy things of a uh, huge variety of types and uh, pathogens that cause them. Many, many, many are on, like on the lower right, which is an insect, has uh, uh, poked a uh, hole in that plant and uh, laid an egg, and then the plant forms the gall around it, and the uh, insect larva uh, develops in there eventually chews itself a little hole and leaves, and the plant goes on uh, to be fairly normal. Uh, these things you see on the bottom right, uh, crown gall, uh, much more serious, often result in, um, if not a dead plant, at least a plant that no longer produces any um, viable fruit. Many, many more diseases out there. Uh, anthrax nose, we often see on uh, sycamores in central Iowa in the spring. They just get uh, this sick looking um, look to the leaves. Uh, sometimes if it's a wet spring, um, all the leaves fall off and then a new set of leaves are formed uh, later in the summer when uh, the anthraxnose fungus is uh, no longer um, uh, being favored by the cool wet spring. Downy mildew, um, another extremely common one. Um, powdery mildew you can see on uh, lilac on the right. Uh, you often see uh, plants uh, later in the summer with they just look like they've been dusted with flour and it's actually uh, the spores of a fungus. Club root, molds, smuts, scabs, um, and then of course diseases due to mechanical wounding. Um, you know, routinely being hit by lawnmowers, um, different things that will cause uh, disease tissue to develop. A another important thing to remember is more than one disease can occur together. So if you're trying to figure out what disease is on your plant, uh, it's not going to be just one thing. Um, there oftentimes, uh, particularly in a stress plant, one disease uh, starts uh, sort of beating up on it and then uh, other secondary diseases can come in. Finally, um, we've been having sort of a run on largest of things, um, another claim for the largest organism on the earth. Uh, in Oregon, there was a continuous growth of mycelium, which is a fungus, uh, that covered 240 acres, which is hard to kind of get your head around, as is 1,700 football fields, but at least you can understand it's a lot of football fields. Uh, they estimate it weighed uh, many tons, uh, different estimates, uh, 10 to 35,000 uh, tons. Age, uh, they actually did some radiocarbon dating on it, so they know it was um, very old. And it is a pathogen of conifer trees, uh, kills the conifers that it's around. Um, the, um, for good, better or worse, uh, it was uh, cut up by a housing division that went in, but there's uh, still a lot of it left there. Um, that includes our plant pathogen report. <laughs>